So here we want to uh, look at a problem very similar to that of um, number three in your homework. All right, so we're going to look at something very similar to number three. Um, and in that problem, you have a charge uh, of some value that your values are going to be randomized. Um, but in any case, you have a charge, uh, some charge, we'll call it Q, and it's going to be in an external field, E, and it's going to uh, accelerate in some direction with some force, right? It's going to experience some force F in some direction. We'll, we'll, we'll give these values here in just a moment, but we're just setting up the problem. Um, and so the question is, uh, what is the field that the charge experiences? So A, we want to find E. And then in the second part of the problem, it asks, what if we replace Q with a different Q that might be negative, right? Uh, we'll call this Q1, and what if I have a new Q, Q2? Um, what will the force be in that case if the field stays the same? So if I replace Q1 with negative Q2, what is the new force? All right, so that's the problem. That's the setup. So now let's actually give this some values. Let's say that uh, Q1 has a value of 5 millicoulombs, okay? And when I place this charge in the external electric field, it experiences perhaps a 15 Newton force, okay? And so part A, uh, and, and by the way, the direction in the problem is specified, so let's go ahead and specify the direction. Uh, let's say northward. Okay, so what that means is I place this charge in this region and it accelerates northward. So the best and easiest thing to do here is to actually just draw a diagram. So I am going to draw my Q, and again this is going to be 5 millicoulombs. So this is a positive charge. Okay, this is a positive charge. And uh, this is Q1. Now, if the force is upward or to the north, we haven't really defined our axes, but this is a very uh, standard way of doing things. Um, so if, if I define north as being upward and the particle accelerates upward, if the force is upward, then positive charges, okay, if you go back to the videos on the uh, beginnings of the electric field, you'll find that positive charges follow electric field lines, okay? So positive charges move along the direction of the field line. Okay, so positive charges move along field lines. Now, why is this? Okay, well, let's just, before we get into this specific problem, let's just look at why this is. Okay, why is it that positive charges follow electric, or follow the field lines? Okay, so let's just say I have two charges, and they're both positive, and this one is fixed. Okay. Now we know that the electric field lines are going to leave this positive charge. They're going to emanate away from it. And the line that connects these two charges, there will be field lines, and they'll get weaker as we go out, that... Um, move away from the fixed charge, right? So these field lines point away from your fixed charge here. And if I release this positive charge, it wants to get away from the fixed positive charge because like charges repel. So it's going to move 
this way. It's going to move away from the fixed charge. So it's going to move in the direction of the field lines. Okay, so this uh, non-fixed positive charge that can move is going to move in the direction of the field lines. Now you may ask, okay, so that's for two positive charges. What if I have a positive and a negative charge? Well, it turns out that it's the same thing, right? So we'll hold a negative charge here fixed and we'll put our positive charge back on and we'll hold a negative charge here fixed right and we're keeping the same orientation so there's going to be an axis that joins the two down the middle and we know that the electric field lines on the negative charge are going to point toward the negative charge and so when I release, and again we're going to fix this, we're going to like nail it down or glue it down or something so it remains fixed. And my positive charge here can move and when I release it from rest it's going to be attracted to the negative charge. So it's still going to follow these negative field, or I shouldn't say negative field lines, but it's going to follow the negative field lines that terminate on the negative charge. So the result is that positive charges will always follow the field lines when they're released. If they're allowed to move, they will follow the field lines. Electric, uh, or I'm sorry, negative charges will always move against the field lines. So positive with the field, with your external field, and negative charges will move against. Okay, so positive charges will move in the direction of the uh, external field and the negative charges will move uh, against the external charge or external field. Okay, so now that we have that, we are now in a position to go back and now actually answer the question, right? We can now go back and start to actually discuss the question. So if we come back up here, and let me erase these. If we come back to the question, we know that the charge is 5 microcoulombs and it is experiencing a force upward. So it, two, one of two things can happen. Okay, one of two things can happen. I can either have a plate, for example, down here where I've glued lots of positive charges. And if I glue lots of positive charges onto this plate, what is going to happen is I'm going to get a more or less uniform upward electric field. And as the positive charge interacts with this electric field, it will experience a force upward because it wants to follow the direction of the field lines. Or alternatively, a second way would be to take a plate and glue lots of negative charges on it. And in that case, the field lines are going to point toward the negative charges. And the uh, positive charge here is still going to accelerate upward. It's still going to feel an upward force. So it does not matter which of these two configurations we have, whether we have positive charges down here, uh, putting electric fields, field lines upward uh, in the north direction, or if we have a collection of negative charges up here that are also uh, causing uh, electric field lines upward. Either case will work. So it really doesn't matter. So let's let's go ahead and assume the positive case just because we can. So if we assume we have a source of some external electric field, we're going to call this the field E. Okay? And it exerts a force on the charge of 15 newtons upward, right? So the force is indeed upward. Now again, why is the force upward? Because there are field lines coming off of charge Q1 and those field lines interact with the field lines from the external field and like charges repel. And so those field lines are going to cause Q1 to want to move away. 
Okay, so the first part of this problem is relatively easy. We've got our uh, charge, we've got our force, and we know that our electric field E is equal to force divided by charge. So I'm going to take 15 newtons and divide it by 5 times 10 to the negative third coulombs. And this will give me 3,000 newtons per coulomb. Okay, so my field is 3,000 newtons per coulomb. Now part B, part B asks, okay, so we still have this source of positive, or I, I shouldn't say positive, I should say we, we have this source of electric field, okay? whatever it is, whether it's positive charges, a collection of positive charges down here, or a collection of negative charges up at the top. This field is still the same. So it still has a value of 3,000 newtons per coulomb. Okay, but now the question is, um, what if, and let's, let's actually come back and give this a number. So let's say 20, negative 20 millicoulombs. So what now if I put a negative charge of negative 20 millicoulombs, okay? And we want to know what the force is. So when you're computing the force, we do have to worry about both the direction and the magnitude. But what I want to do is when I'm just computing the force, I want to ignore the negative sign. Okay, I'm going to ignore that negative sign, and my force is just going to be um, 20 times 10 to the negative third times the field that I computed from the previous part, because the field didn't change, so times 3,000. The result is 60 newtons, right? The result is 60 newtons. Now you may have been able to figure that out ahead of time because uh, Q2 has a magnitude that's four times larger than Q1, and my result, 60 newtons, is four times larger than our result of 15. Now to answer the question, what direction is this going to move? Well, we've already answered that. Um, remember that the negative charge is going to move against the field lines and because it's attracted to these positive charges down here. So the negative charge is actually going to move south. All right, the negative charge is going to move south. Okay, um, and likewise, if my uh, field were due to uh, a bunch of negative charges up here, right? If my if my field were due to negative charges up here. Um, the field lines would still be pointing up. And my charge Q2 would still accelerate downward because it would be uh, repelled by these like charges. So it's either going to attract the positive charges or be repelled by the negative charges. So that's why we really don't care which type of situation uh, this is, whether it's a collection of positive charges uh, below or a collection of uh, negative charges above, either case will still give the same result for both charges Q1 and Q2. Their behavior will be the same in either case. So I hope that that helps uh, clear up a little bit of confusion for problem three. I know some of you were struggling on that, so uh, I wanted to make this video for you in case um, you may find it helpful.